the render network has been updated with a bunch of new generative AI updates, including a fresh new UI, new generative models, as well as a fresh new ecosystem. Let's dive in. When we jump over to the AI generation page, we'll see this fresh new UI. Let's take a look how we properly navigate this page. We'll see a new session at the top, and this will be our current session. If we click here, we can see previous sessions as well. If we click over here, we can show all sessions, and this will include all of the sessions below. If we jump to a previous session, we can see we can rename the session as well. So if we want to keep things tidy and organized, feel free to rename all of your sessions. There's a compact view also. And this will consolidate things for easier viewing. If we scroll through, we can see all of the image and video outputs from that session. So let's dive into the settings a bit more. If we come over to our type of generation, we'll see we have all of our generation options, image to image, image to video, text to image, and text to video. Let's use text to image for now. Within this generator type, we have two generator options. We have Flux and Photon, and for each, we have different settings. Inside Flux, you'll see image width and image height. We'll see text prompt, number of images to generate, 1 through 10, and our advanced options. We can select Flux models between Dev, Pro, and 1.1 Pro. You can also enable Prompt Upsampling for a bit more fidelity on inputs. Flux also has a seed option, which can be very handy when you're trying to get consistent results, or you can randomize your seed. And then there's the safety tolerance. The safety tolerance uses moderation and filtering based on content, zero being the most strict and six being the least strict. Lastly, we have payment options, which we can use render credits or render tokens, and we'll leave as render credits for now. If we scroll back up, we can change our generator over to Photon. Photon gives us a little bit different options. Our text prompt, our aspect ratio, number of images 1 to 10 as well. Advanced options include Photon Flash and Photon Model. We can see the cost generation for both also. We'll see some options on our outputs. We can view the output, download the output, jump into Photo P Editor, or we can click the last button, which will recycle the image as an image prompt. Once we use the image to prompt, our generator switches to image to image. Within the photon image to image generation, we have a prompt weight. We can set that from zero to one. Within the flux image to image, we do not have a weight. It's also important to add additional text prompt in conjunction with the image prompt for both image to image generators. Aside from that, all of the settings remain the same as the text to image generations. Photon Flash is a more affordable and faster model, Photon, but they're not the exact same. There are some subtle deviations between the two models. In this case, the Photon Flash is a little bit more amber, a little bit more saturated with a little bit more contrast. You have to try them both out to see what you like best. With Flux, if you'd like to use the same seed, you can simply click on the seed on any of the Flux outputs and copy the clipboard. You can then paste that seed into the initial seed setting for a similar output. Now let's take a look at text to video. The text to video generator is a dream machine, and we have two models, Ray 1.6 and Ray 2. We can generate one or two outputs, we can enable looping, and there are various aspect ratios. Now let's take a look at one of the newer and most exciting generators, Image to Video. Immediately you may see a red error, which is asking for an image for the prompt. Currently the Image to Video only supports the AI generated images, so you must use the Recycle button on one of the generated outputs to use as an image prompt. Once you've selected an image, you can toggle first frame or to use as a final frame. Remember to select your aspect ratio, number of generations, option for looping, and don't forget to add a text prompt. After we set everything the way we'd like, we can click generate. And the wonderful thing about this new ecosystem is while we wait on our generations, we can hop over to other models and generators and generate more images and videos. If 
you like an output and you want to continue to iterate on that output, you can click the Iterate button above the output. This will duplicate all of the parameters and settings. From there, you can resubmit the job for variations and remix as much as you like. The Render Network has many more models and features soon to come. Be sure to check back regularly and jump in today to start generating within this new amazing ecosystem at render.x.io.